I'm a lonely Goomba, stuck between two pipes. Well, guess I keep on gaming for the rest of my life. Do you ever just sit down and admire video game box art? Super Mario Kart, for instance, is so energetic, bursting with life, it's colorful, it really captures the essence of Mario Kart. Then take a look at Double Dash. It's so energetic, it's bursting with life, it is colorful, it really captures the essence of Mario Kart. And then we got Mario Kart DS. It's, uh, it's pretty white and uh, as Mario in a cart, I suppose. I mean, I know the game's called Mario Kart, but you didn't have to make it so literal. Did they run out of ideas? I mean, they just slapped Mario on a blank background and called it a day. Uh, it's absolutely terrible. In the trash it goes. And thus concludes my review of Mario Kart DS. Thank you for watching. Wait, you thought I was going to play the game? Oh, uh, well, uh, this is awkward. I'll tell you what. I'll do it. I'll break my usual formula of reviewing art and play a video game instead. Just to spice things up, you know, keep things fresh and original. So, let's take a look, shall we? And, well, just as I thought, it's Mario Kart. You got 50cc, which is painfully slow, 100cc, which is alright, and 150cc is where all the fun is at. And you can even unlock a mirror mode this time, which Flips all the tracks, as you probably know. Oh, look at that, it's pretty fancy. The character roster then, and it is the standard stuff, really. There's nothing too amazing. But hey, at least they have the legend himself. The mustachioed hero we all know and love, Luigi. You can even unlock more characters this time, too. You can get Daisy, the worst of the princesses, stay mad. Dry Bones, who should consider using lube. A Waluigi, who's just happy to be here. And there's a super secret character, who I'll talk about later. But the game is like 20 years old, so you probably know who it is anyway. Okay, forget it, I'll just tell you. It's me, the Lonely Goomba, in Mario Kart. Pretty cool, right? It's about time I got the recognition I deserve. What? Y you don't believe me? Well, take a look at this incredibly blurry photo I took. See, it's totally a Goomba in that cart. I bet you'll feel right silly now for doubting me. Oh well, I forgive you. Also new to this game is the fact its character has her own unique cart design. Luigi has a giant vacuum for instance, Donkey Kong has decapitated Rambi, Wario has his car from Royal Land 4, only it's uh, the wrong colour some reason, and Dry Bones has no respect for the dead, and Bowser is driving in a car shaped like his foot. The less said about that one, the better. So overall, a pretty good selection I'd say, having said that. Egg one is the best card, so uh, get used to seeing that in pretty much all my footage. Better yet, you eventually unlock the ability to use any card with any character. So you can have Peach in the egg one, or Luigi in the egg one, or even Mario in the egg one. The possibilities are truly endless. And to top it off, they even gave you the ability to draw your own emblem on your cart. Man, so many penises were drawn that day. This isn't a penis though, no, 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 this is a Goomba. See, it's got a face, that's how you can tell the difference. Pretty proud of this actually, not that you'd ever really see it in the game, but still, I know it's fair, and that's what matters uh, to me. Right, so first, uh, let's take a look at the track selection, shall we? The cups are split into two sets this time, the Nitro Cups and the Retro Cups. Basically, the new tracks and the returning ones are, just in case you couldn't figure that one out. Only this time, unlike Super Circuit, you don't have to dedicate half your life to unlocking the Retro Track, so uh, that's nice. The new tracks then, and they're good. They're real good. Yeah, sure, you have some of the standard boring stuff like a, a generic figure eight circuit, Mario circuit again, a beach, and another dirt stadium. I mean, come on now, lads. That's like three times now. I mean, what's next? A generic snow course? Oh. But, to be completely honest, almost every other track has a new or interesting theme. Seriously, the track themes in this game are the best in the series up to this point, easily. And the layouts match the quality of the themes too. You got Luigi's Mansion, Delfino Square, a Waluigi Pinball, TikTok 
Clock, Airship Fortress, Peaches Gardens and the list goes on. All certified Mario Kart classics. And even the more typical themes are handled great here too. Take the desert track, being ripped right from Mario Bros 3. He even got the angry sun flying around trying to kill you. It's great. I mean, it's not great that the sun's trying to kill you, but you, you know what I mean. Bowser's Castle also seems much more inspired by the games this time too. See, that's the thing I'm noticing a lot more with these tracks. Instead of Mario driving through a racetrack which is loosely based on a possible Mario location, it feels like you're actually in a Mario level and you just so happen to be in a cart. Airship Fortress, you've survived, but you just showed up to Bowser's fleet uninvited and you're causing a right ruckus. TikTok Clock is just like you entered the level by mistake and you're just making the best of it. And Delfino Square feels like you're not even legally allowed to be driving here at all. I'm off expecting the cops to show up again. I, just, I can't go back to jail. I just can't. My arse is still recovering from last time. <clears throat> Anyway, uh, my point is, it's probably the most Mario feeling Mario Kart ever made up to this point, maybe even still to this day. I kind of dropped the ball with the Donkey Kong track though, like, okay, real talk. What the heck has Donkey Kong got to do with snow? It's just a generic snow course. Between this and DK Summit, I'm really wondering why they kept giving Donkey Kong the snow course. Were they just conditioning us for tropical freeze or something? Was it some kind of psyop marketing campaign? I just don't get it. Someone tell Nintendo that Donkey Kong lives in the jungle, please. He doesn't even like snow. I mean, look at him. He's cold and afraid for God's sake. He wants to be free in the jungle eating fresh bananas. Talking about fresh, it's time for today's sponsor, Factor 75. That was a pretty smooth transition, right? See, now you can get fresh, ready-made meals delivered right to your doorstep, or uh, pipes in my case. And these aren't your typical crappy ready meals. These are fresh and made by proper chefs. I bet they wear those little hats and everything. That's how you know it's good. You don't even have to worry about meal prep or washing up or cooking really. Just slap it in the microwave for a few minutes and you got yourself a banging healthy meal. And to top it off, the menus are updated each week so you're never short of choice. Heck, if you're bad at making decisions, they can even send meals to you just based on your own taste preferences. You can customise all sorts to fit your lifestyle to be honest. It's quick, it's healthy and you ain't gonna be breaking the bank. Heck, sign up using my link in the description or visit the site at go.factor75.com and use my code on the screen factor se33169 and you'll get 50% off your first box. I mean, you're practically stealing it from them at that point, let's be honest. So check it out, it's solid stuff. But back to Mario Kart. And of course, it all ends with Rainbow Road. Not the most memorable Rainbow Road, frankly, but it's still good and pretty challenging too most notable for its corkscrew and loop-de-loop -loop of death. Seriously, getting hit on these is enough to ruin your entire race. You just slowly fall down and there's nothing you can do but watch. It's brutal. But overall, I'd say this is a fantastic selection of tracks. It really elevated what to expect from the theming of Mario Kart. It's top level stuff. But how are the retro tracks? Well, honestly, they're not that great. Half of them are from the 2D Mario Kart games, which is fine. And it does have some bangers like Sky Garden. But for the most part, there's just not that much that stands out here. Like, was anyone really losing sleep over Chaco Island 2 or Peach Circuit? When you got a nice new 3D system, the last thing you want to be doing is racing on a flat ass peach circuit, you know? I want a nice bumpy lumpy ass peach circuit. I don't know, maybe I'm asking for too much. I'd probably be complaining they weren't faithful to the original games anyway. I guess I'm just a big old whinging bastard. The N64 track selection's good though. Can't really go wrong with Moo Moo Farm, Chaco Mountain, Banshee Boardwalk and uh, Frape Snowland? Fra frappe Snowland? Frap Snowland? What the hell is a frap? I've already had my frap today, thank you very much. Should have just called this one a uh, Donkey Kong Snowland and be done with it. There we go. Much better. But things get even more dicey with the GameCube tracks. First up, they took Luigi's Circuit from Double Dash and made it like five times as big for some reason. You're just driving down this big, wide, fecking empty straight line. There's just nothing to it. I've literally had shit more engaging than this. The whole point of this track was that it was pretty narrow, so you'd bump into other incoming races. The track is 
bleeding massive for cards are little specks on the road in comparison. I mean, just look at them side by side, it completely misses the point of the entire track. Then you got Baby Park, another incredibly simple course, but without the chaos of Double Dash, it's just not the same. There's just not enough going on for the premise to work, it just feels empty and soulless. Literally the worst version of this track. Then you got Mushroom Bridge, which fair dues is a decent track, but they done gone removed the shortcut up the side of the bridge. Bro, that's oh, literally the best part of the track, and they ruined it. And finally, you got another circuit track, Yoshi Circuit. Again, it's a fine track, but they removed shortcuts in this too. Really though, the problem with these tracks is that they're really lacking variety. You can tell they were pretty limited in what the DS could handle, so they opted for the least demanding tracks. But in doing so, you end up with a pretty boring selection. So yeah, the retro tracks are a nice addition, but they certainly aren't the highlight of the game. I think I'd take pretty much any Nitro track over any of these if I'm being completely honest. Having said that, I'd still say the game has the best tracks in the series up to this point, and having 32 tracks in the Mario Kart game was still kind of mind blowing. So the tracks get a thumbs up from me, if I had any thumbs. But how is the actual gameplay? Well, it's good. Kind of. Okay, I talk about the elephant in the room. Snaking. See, the way the drift boost works in this game is kinda busted. The way it works is like this. You drift and then you activate the boost by pressing left and right on your D-pad as you drift. The quicker you press, the faster your turbo boost will charge. The problem is, you can do this so fast that you can literally constantly boost, even on straight lines. You're just constantly boosting around without a care in the world. It makes the game a complete joke once you master it. And the thing is, once the genie's out of the bottle, you can't exactly put it back in. You can't just unlearn how to snake. I mean, that's just intentionally playing bad at that point. I mean, I've tried. It, it doesn't work. You start second guessing yourself. Is it okay to boost here? Or is that snaking? Will people get mad at me if I boost here? I mean, it's kind of a bend, so it should be okay, right? I mean, it's just miserable to play like that. You, you might as well just embrace it and kick everyone's ass. Shouldn't be your problem they suck at the game, right? It's a double-edged sword, really. It raises the skill ceiling, and it makes the game more unique, and personally, I think it's fun, but it also completely breaks a good chunk of the game. It's like wave dashing in Smash Bros, really. Unintentional, but makes the game better for those tryhards out there. And if you're playing with friends, and everyone knows how to do it, it's truly a blast. It is probably the most competitive Mario Kart game in the entire series. But otherwise, it's just so one-sided. A non-snaker will never beat you, ever. They simply cannot win, it is that simple. So, you spend most of the game boosting around like a maniac in your head car, you're constantly rocking the d-pad back and forth till you get blisters on the thumbs and you look like one of those people in a TV sitcom who's just shaking the controller around like an idiot. That's what sneaking feels like. The problem is that the developers clearly didn't have this in mind. The computer players never do it, heck, even the staff ghost on the time trials don't do it. They just boost once per bend and that's it. That's what they intended. Meanwhile, I'm over here zooming around like I'm auditioning for the next F-Zero game. It's ridiculous, really. Luckily, snaking isn't that useful on 150cc onwards. It's certainly more than possible, especially on the more basic tracks, but once the tracks get more complex and bendy, it's not always ideal to do. And if you're going for a good rank, you might want to just play it safe and not risk smacking into the walls. Basically, it becomes a lot more tactical rather than an instant win button, which is good. Another thing to consider is, the rubber banding AI is a little relentless in 150cc, so even if you play like a god, they're always just a couple of blue shells behind. Talking about blue shells, this game went a bit crazy with the item balance. I think this is probably the game where the term got Mario Karted came from. It can be damn right ridiculous at times. But in Super Circuit, you can play through the entire game and see maybe three blue shells ever. In Mario Kart DS, I'm getting bleeding blue shelled five times in a single race. Sometimes in the span of a few seconds. It can be damn right sadistic at times. I don't even feel guilty about snaking at this point when the game's throwing all this shit at me, you know? Yeah, you gonna fuck me over? Well, too bad, because I'm gonna break the entire game, you cheeky git. Your move, Mario Kart DS. 
Still, at least it's a decent challenge. But these items do make getting the triple star rank feel a little bit luck based this time. In Super Seki, it felt purely skill based. But in this, you could have an entire run ruined by something completely out of your control, and that's no good. Having said that, I do think it's a lot easier getting the triple star ranks this time, if you care about that kind of thing. Not that it matters, because the only thing you get for doing them is a star next to your name in multiplayer. Talking about multiplayer, this game has the battle mode. Now, to be honest, I might be in the minority here, but I really don't care about battle mode in Mario Kart. Like, at all. I'll play it once, maybe twice, and that's it. But for what it's worth, the battle mode here is really solid. You got a good selection of stages, all with original assets, and you've got various modes too. And for the first time in the series, you can play with computer players. So you can at least experience this, even if you have no friends like me. You're living the dream now, lad. But yeah, it's one of the better battle modes in the series. Maybe the best. I don't know. I still think Mario Kart 64 is better, but really, I I feel like ever since the Wii game, battle modes have been kinda shit, so uh, this is probably the last good battle mode if you ask me. But as you might know, there's more to Mario Kart DS than just for racing and battles. Oh yes, this is it. This is what you're all here for, right? The legendary mode that showed up, everyone loved it, and then Nintendo decided to never do it again. The Mission Mode. See tucked away in this game, there's a series of missions, 63 to be exact, which is pretty beefy. These consist of little challenges such as uh, driving through gates, hitting enemies, collecting coins, uh, pretty basic stuff. But they do get more interesting as they go on. You start driving through tracks backwards, racing against a drink driver, reversing through obstacle courses, and even competing against a chain chomp. Excuse me mate, but I'm pretty sure it's against the rules to race without a cart. I might have to disqualify you for that. Oh, he spit off my face. Never mind, man, you just carry on doing that. Don't, don't mind me. The missions are quite fun though, and at the end of each world is a boss fight. There's a cool too. If a little easy, okay, they're really easy. Like uh, you can kill them in a few seconds on your first try easy. But even so, it's a neat idea, and it's nice to see these characters return from the past games. And by past games, I mean entirely from Super Mario 64 DS. See, you're usually in an arena, and you've got to kill them using various methods, such as pushing them off the stage, shooting shells at the eyes, beating them in a race, or collecting all the coins. And okay, that boss sucks, but still, the others are pretty good. And all of these missions and bosses have their own ranking system too, meaning you can get up to 3 stars for every mission. I mean, that's a ton of replay value right there. And better yet, you're actually rewarded for getting a good rank. See, if you get a star rank in every mission, you'll unlock the secret final world. Ooh, and these are the hardest missions in the game. And it all ends with a fight against the true final boss. Uh. Wiggler. I always knew Wiggler was the mastermind behind all this. Bowser was just a mere pawn in his game. It was Wiggler all along. I mean, that's the face of pure evil right there. So overall, the mission mode is fun, but to be honest, I think a lot of people kind of oversell it. Too many of the missions feel like filler, and some of them are just downright tedious. Lots of the missions just involve hitting tiny enemies with small hitboxes and... Um, I mean, this looks fun, right? And then you have stuff like driving into crates, chasing up with moving item boxes. Uh, I mean, the fun never stops. But despite all that, the mode is still worthwhile, and a lot of the missions are really standout moments. It's something Nintendo really should expand upon. I mean, they kind of did it again with the Wii, but it was an online event, which you could only play for a set period of time, and then it was gone forever. So it might as well not even exist. Yeah, great idea then, Nintendo. I'm sure everyone loved that one. But seriously now, they could really do something special with his missions. Make an entire Mario Kart adventure mode or something. Have a world map and levels like that, you know, like Diddy Kong Mason. I'd love to see it. But there's still another thing in this game I forgot to mention. Can't quite put my finger on what it was. Oh, oh yes, this was the first Mario Kart game and Nintendo game to ever have online multiplayer. And man, it was cool at the time. 
Not that it matters anymore because the online doesn't work now. Again, before you leave a comment, yes, there are unofficial ways to play online, but there's no one playing it anyway. Even so, man, the online isn't as good as I remember. First up, it's four players max, so the races feel really empty. They removed 12 of the tracks too, which incidentally are the best ones in the game. TikTok Clock, Beach Gardens, Airship Fortress, Waluigi Pinball, it's all gone. But hey, at least we got Peach Circuit. You can rest easy tonight, fellas. No infecting Peach Circuit made for cut. They even removed some items too. There's no triple shells, there's no triple bananas. I guess the game just couldn't handle it. And to rub further salt in the wound, you can't even drag the items behind you. I mean, none of this really mattered at the time, because the concept of playing Mario Kart online was so amazing that you simply just didn't care. But looking back, man, it was pretty rough, I'm not gonna lie. And the cherry on top is that you could only play on 100cc, meaning snaking was absolutely prominent online. That's why it was such a big deal, you had to do it online to stand a chance. But alas, there's no point crying over spilt milk. It's all just a distant memory at this point. It'd be like getting upset about an online exploit in thicken Advance Wars Dark Conflict, I mean, who gives a shit anymore? And that's Mario Kart DS. Man, they really didn't hold back on this one. There's just so much to do here, it's crazy. You got four speed classes, eight cups, triple star ranks for each one, there's 63 missions, staff ghost, battle mode, and then there's online to keep you busy once it's all done. It's the most jam-packed Mario Kart ever released, at the time anyway. But playing it today, it all feels a little redundant in a way. Uh, it's just weird. Mario Kart DS was the Mario Kart game which set the series down a specific path. Like they finally started to figure out what they wanted to do with the series. Before then, every Mario Kart game was widely different from the last. Y you never really knew what to expect. But DS was the framework which all future games built upon. Even to this day, I feel like it can all be traced back to DS. The problem with that is, I feel like all those future games kind of did it better. Obviously, the game is amazing. It, it was the best Mario Kart at the time, don't get me wrong. But playing it today, it's just lost some of the uniqueness. If I'm being completely honest, I'd rather just be playing Mario Kart 8. I, I'm not going to lie. So, you're basically left with three reasons to play this game today. One, the mission mode. Two, exploiting the boost system. And three, yeah, come play as the Lonely Goomba. It's the best game ever made. is Mike Hawk. By the time Mike Hawk got some attention around here, Mike Hawk has been neglected for way too long. Well, this is your time to shine. Stand tall and stand proud. <laughs> 